As spring returns, the rivers come to life, and the trout start to rise again as the mayflies appear. And the most majestic of all New Zealand mayflies appears, the Kākehi Queen. A traditional favourite dry fly for all New Zealand stream anglers. This insect has a magnificent coloration with its mahogany coloured body and yellow wings. It's one of New Zealand's larger mayflies. The traditional pattern works very well, but here's a development I've been working on for the past few years. This floats high, easy to see, and has a realistic profile. Now try. Try and get it in front of him, Deborah. Good on ya. A lovely fish. Stunning fish. And there's another one, I think. I know, I know, I know, I know. To make the legs and the body on this fly, we use stretched audio tape. You can see how I'm doing it here. Just pull the tape out and stretch it. Okay, we start off with a curved hook and brown free barrow monocord. And as always, we're just going to tie along the shank just to start off and trim off the tag. Now, I'm going to show you the audio tape again. Just pull it out. I like this method and stretch it out. We're going to use that to form the rib here, tying that in along the shank of the hook and go around. We want to use the curve of the hook here. That looks very realistic, like the bend in the mayfly body. And tie right up to the eye and back just behind the eye. Now we get the ultra chenille, burn the end to look lifelike and tapered, assess the length that you want, you don't want it too long, you don't want it too short, and tie it in just a millimetre or so behind the eye of the hook, and you can trim off the excess. Now we're just going to lightly rib that over. The lovely thing about the audio tape is it looks very lifelike, it has a great sheen about it, and also importantly light. Being a dry fly, we want to keep this fly aloft. Look at that segmented body forming there. Beautiful, a real super normal releaser. Trim the excess tape off. Now go back a few turns. Now we're going to get the partridge hackle. It's another fantastic fish catching material. And just go through this process of removing the center. You can save that for another fly. Flare the hackles back like so into a V, put it back on top of the hook and tie around to secure. This forms very realistic legs, gives the fly a very very realistic coloration and look. A few turns to secure. Now we're going to put in the polypropylene wing. I'm choosing a grey and a yellow to suit this mayfly. You don't want too much here, you don't, you want a sparse fly. Now holding that in on top and going back one or two turns like so. And as always with this polypropylene material, it's a good idea to put a little bit of super glue on. This secures it and waterproofs it. Tie a few turns over. Trim that to the length that's you suit. Again, you don't want it too long on this fly. 
And now we're going to grab the audio tape again and just as we did before stretch it out to make the legs and we're just going to tie in a piece of this on either side of the fly. Again not too long you can judge the length and trim off. Now we'll do the same on the other side of the fly. Trim off. Yeah, just trim them nice and evenly. Make sure they're in place, a few turns, and whip finish. Trim off. Just bend those legs a little bit. It gives it the, the tape bends very well, so it gives it a very realistic look to put a bit of a bend in, as you can see there. And here we go, a wonderful, wonderful profile. Along with the dry fly, the nymph of this insect is just as important. It lives in fast flowing spring creek small streams throughout New Zealand. During the whole of the past season, most guide days I took insect samples from streams and I was amazed at how often this insect came up. Time and time again I found the Calorobiscus mayfly nymph. Okay, we're going to start with the strong wire nymph hook, the black tungsten bead and 3 baro tobacco brown monocord. A few turns to start and trim the tag. Now a few turns behind the bead. Now we're going to slip the bead back a few millimeters and put a few turns in. This leaves room for the wing case and the legs later on. Now a few more turns and then we'll go back behind the bead. Now we want to use the curve of the hook here. This fly has quite a hunched look and a few turns forward. Now we're going to grab some pheasant tail, the browner colour on the pheasant tail, and you don't need many fibres here, just three or four, and we're going to tie on a short tail. This insect has a short tail, just tying it in on top like so, to the curve of the hook, and coming forward a little bit. You can see the size of the tails there, quite small. Now a few turns. Now we're going to get some nymph skin. This is a dark tan coloured nymph skin. We're going to tie it behind the tungsten bead. Now we'll go forward with the cord and we'll pull the nymph skin over to the eye of the hook and put a few turns in to hold it. Now we'll go to the back of the hook and now we'll bring the nymph skin over again and tie it in nice and firmly and trim it off. This nymph skin gives a really nice shiny pronounced wing case, a lot like you find on the natural. You can see that here. Now for the next stage we're going to get some ostrich hill. A nice brown coloured ostrich hill here using two hurls at once. Trim the end, tie them in at the back and tie them right to the back of the hook where the tails are and then wind forward with the cord. Now we're going to wind the ostrich hill forward. This forms the gills that are on this nymph. It's often called a spiny gill mayfly. A few turns to secure that in and trim off the excess. Now what I do is I go back through the fly with the monocord and forward. This acts as a rib to secure the fragile ostrich hill. Now we go forward and just let it hang for a while. Now we're going to get the brown pheasant again. 
and pull off just tree fibers. This is going to look like the legs. We're going to tie it in. I'm going to tie it in at the front and just flare three fibers over to the left side and then the other side. And you can see that's going to give the legs on this fly a nice realistic look about them too. A few turns and not off however you choose to finish. I like to do the finger whip finish here. Trim the monocord off. Now what we're going to do is trim the legs to length. You don't want them too long here because um, the longer the legs they take away from your sink time. And they look unrealistic about that length there. Pull off any scraggly bits. And here we go. You have their fantastic Coloribiscus nymph. Um, a go-to nymph. The final stage on this is just to put a little bit of super glue on that nymph skin. This pronounces the wing case even more.